Hi and welcome to Sniffing the Sheets. I'm Bex. Welcome back if you've been here before. Today I'm going to give you my memoir recommendations and run you through the ones sat on my TBR waiting to be read. Primarily I read fiction but I do love a memoir and I think it's because I'm nosy and I like to find out about people and I like to empathise with people. I'm not huge on celebrity memoirs. I think I tend to prefer memoirs by ordinary people, but perhaps ordinary people who have had extraordinary life experiences. So I realised I have read quite a few and I thought, why not tell you about them? Number one is Educated by Tara Westover. This came out in 2018 and it tells the story of Tara who was born in Idaho in the 80s to a Mormon household but with very radical beliefs. So by the age of seven she has never gone to school, she has never seen a mainstream doctor, she has no birth certificate. And essentially Tara and her siblings are indoctrinated by their father's very radical beliefs. Tara's father has his children work on the scrapyard with him and it's very dangerous. There are a number of accidents and incidents, one of which leaves one of her siblings very disfigured. And when this happens, her father says that it is God's will that has kept her sibling alive. And essentially he takes no responsibility for any of his actions. Trigger warnings for this book, definitely um, Google those before you begin. Um, it does deal with domestic abuse, domestic violence. One of her siblings encourages her to leave home and go to university against her parents' wishes. This is obviously a huge challenge for Tara as she hasn't been in mainstream school. Nevertheless, she actually manages to get a scholarship and she ends up studying at Cambridge. And there she begins to learn about various mental illnesses and she comes to the conclusion herself that her father suffered from a mental illness. She believes her father had bipolar disorder. And this realization allows Tara to find some sort of closure to her childhood and come to terms with it and understand that her father's actions were perhaps, she believes, um, a result of his mental illness. And it's a very um, shocking and upsetting book, but it ultimately is a story of hope and perseverance and resilience and following your own path when faced with huge adversity. Number two, this is going to hurt by Adam Kay. This is Adam's diary entries while he was working as a junior doctor within the NHS. This has been turned into a TV series on BBC which is entertaining. He's also gone on to write further books so he did like a little Christmas edition and he's done another book called Undoctored which um, again tracks his experiences post working as a doctor because he has now left the NHS. It's very, it's hard hitting and it's shocking, but it's written with a very comedic tone. Um, because the diary entries are short, it's a super light, easy read. And I know so many people that have read this and love this. I think this is one that's good for people, if you like, I mean, it's been out years now, so a lot of people will have read it, but if you get a gift for somebody who isn't a big reader, this is definitely very accessible. And it shows us the strains and stresses that the NHS staff are, NHS staff are under and Adam's great difficulty maintaining a healthy personal life outside of his job because his job is so demanding and overwhelming. Number three, When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi. Paul is 36 years old and he's working as a neurosurgeon when he finds out he has stage four lung cancer and he then decides to write this memoir. Paul has us asking where we find meaning in life and also what happens if suddenly your time here is cut short and your goals uh, no longer seem to make any sense. It's obviously a very emotional read, but I think it's a very important one um, to hear the thoughts of somebody who knows that unfortunately they don't have very long left here. So we follow Paul from when, I think it begins when he um, gets his diagnosis up until he passes away. So he keeps writing indefinitely, unsure of when um, he is gonna pass away. And there is a really um, emotional epilogue at the end written by his wife. Um, and yeah, it's a short read, but I think it's a very important story. Number four, Butterfly by Yusra Mardini. This came out in 2018, and it is the story of Yusra, who as a teenager in Syria, she is a very promising swimmer. I was bought this by my sister as a gift because I was a swimmer myself as a kid, so I was instantly drawn to it. 
Yusra and her sister are coached by their dad in Syria when the war there means that Yusra and her sister are no longer safe and they have to flee and they find their, themselves traveling across Europe. They end up settling in Germany. They're in a very small boat or a sort of dinghy in the sea when the motor dies and the boat starts to sink and everybody of course is panicking. So Yusra and her sister Sarah jump into the sea. So they're obviously taking some weight out of the boat so that it doesn't sink as much and they begin to pull the boat to the shore. The book shows us the incredibly difficult journey that the girls have trying to make it to safety um, and seeking a life of safety in Europe and when they are in Germany, Yusra is determined to continue swimming because swimming is her passion. So she convinces a German swim coach to give her some coaching and he enters her into the Olympics and she swims in the 2016 Olympic Games on the refugee team. I remember watching it. It's a story of mental strength, of hope, of determination, of the destruction and tragedy of war. Yusra is now a goodwill ambassador for the UN. I've got a quote from Yusra that I'm going to read out and it says, being a refugee is not a choice. Our choice is to die at home or risk death trying to escape. And they've also made a film of this now on Netflix, which is also good. Personally, I think the book is a lot better. A very, very important story. Number five is Unnatural Causes by Dr. Richard Shepard. Richard Shepard is a forensic pathologist and this book looks at his career and the cases he's worked on as well as how do you live your life when so much of your life and your day-to-day -day time is surrounded by death. And Richard has worked on mass disasters, high profile murders, catching serial killers, freak accidents, terror attacks and ultimately he must answer how did this person die. It's super fascinating and very absorbing. And it also shows us the changing methods throughout his career as technologies advance in terms of how they conduct autopsies. It's a very accessible book. You don't really need any prior medical um, forensic knowledge to read this book. Number six, Beyond Impossible by Mimi Anderson. So this is the story of Mimi. Mimi is in her 30s and she is recovering from anorexia, which she has struggled with for many, many years. And she starts to run very recreationally. Her first goal is to run a mile on the treadmill in the gym. And while she's there, some other ladies approach her and encourage her to go running with them outside and she loves it. And before long, she manages to run 10 miles, which surprises her. And basically she becomes obsessed and within no time, she is challenging herself to ultra marathons. So she tries to break the Guinness World Record for running from John O'Groats in I get this the wrong way around. It's 840 miles from John O'Groats in Scotland to Land's End in Cornwall. And we also follow her on other ultra runs. So she does one in the desert. She does one in super cold conditions. And I absolutely love this, but this is right up my street. I love this kind of story. And a couple of weeks after starting to read this book, so I was possibly still reading it at the time, a friend who lives close by who is into ultra runs, I saw on Instagram was doing one like literally about 10 days later. Um, and he propositioned me to it and I'd only ever ran a few 10Ks before and I was so inspired by this book that I entered it and I ran 33 miles in a day. So it was like just short of five miles on per loop and you go on the hour every hour until you can't go anymore. People were going for like two days, it's insane, non-stop. But I went for eight hours um, and I absolutely loved it and I injured myself. So that's what happens when you don't train, but I don't regret it. Number seven is The Choice by Edith Eager. Edith was sent to Auschwitz as a teenager and this is her story. So she's a very talented ballerina and essentially she manages to survive her time in Auschwitz by being made to dance and entertain. Um, but Edith is now in her 90s and she's worked for many years as a psychotherapist and she works with um, people suffering with PTSD, um, ex-military personnel and uh, victims of abuse and so while it's a super traumatic story it's also a story of hope, inspirational story and yeah I don't think there's much more to say about it if you want a very emotional read there it is. Number eight is one I'm excited about. So 
Clear for Takeoff and Hope for the Best by John Campbell. And I'm going to show you John's cute little picture on the back. There he is. Now, this one was gifted to me because we met John and his very lovely wife on holiday earlier in the year when I had plans to just start this booktube for a bit of fun. And he started to tell me that he'd recently written his memoir, which is about his career as an air traffic controller. And by the time I got home from a holiday, this was waiting on the mat with a very cute note from him. And John, we spent the day with John and his wife, Jerry, playing golf, and we went out into the mountains and had a super cute lunch. And I knew when he said he'd written a book that it would be entertaining because he's super witty and just a really interesting person. So John takes us on a journey through his career as an, air as an air traffic controller and it's written in super short chapters which I absolutely love like some of them are like two pages long and it's essentially mostly comedic anecdotes so I had no prior knowledge of aviation and no prior interest in aviation but I found this really entertaining and interesting and I actually enjoyed learning a little bit about air traffic control and aviation, which surprised me because it's not something I would have thought I'd be into. It obviously helped that I've met John because as I'm reading this, I could sort of hear his voice and his sense of humour in it. And you can get this on Amazon. I've left him a nice review. So there it is in case, especially if any of you are into aviation, I feel like it's a definite must read. So there are all the ones that I have read and now I'm going to run you through quickly all the ones I have on my shelf that I've still to read. First up, I have Life as a Unicorn by Amru al -Khadi. So it is Amru's story of becoming a drag queen. Amru is gay and they were born to a quite a strict Muslim household where, where this wasn't accepted and this is their story of following their path and being true to themselves. An Astronaut's Guide to Life on Earth by Chris Hadfield, Life Lessons from Space. Obviously, Chris Hadfield is a super famous astronaut, so I think this follows his time in space, and also it says life lessons from space, so his time in space and his career, and also what he's learned in life. Next up, I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. I don't think I need to say much about this because it's been everywhere recently. Jeanette was a child actress, and this looks at her experiences of being a child actress, and also her relationship with her mother, who I believe was abusive. Next up is Brother Do You Love Me. I got this recently in Waterstones and um, it just caught my eye because it's got all of these, like what look like kids' drawings. So Reuben and Manny are brothers. Reuben is 38 and is living in a home for adults with learning disabilities. Reuben has Down syndrome and he hasn't spoken for over a year and he's on antidepressants and he's really struggling with life when he writes a note to his brother that just says brother do you love me so his brother manny is living in spain at the time and he instantly decides that he needs to leave spain come back to england take his brother out of the care facility and care for him himself and this is their story so i mean it just sounds so moving doesn't it i believe the words are written by manny but all of the illustrations are by his brother and obviously that's how Reuben expresses himself is through his drawings. This is their story of hope and resilience and it questions how we care for those we love and demands that through troubled times we learn how to take better care of each other. Um, I just want to read this now, I've actually told you about it so I can't wait to get to that one. Oh, one more thing, so we went to the theatre for the evening the other day with my partner's dad and when we turned up, he came outside with a little package for me. And he's bought me a copy of this, which is Peeps Diary. Confession, I had never heard of Samuel Peeps, but Samuel Peeps was high up in the Navy and a member of parliament during the 1600s. And this is his diary that he kept for 10 years. So spanning 1659 to 69. So it covers like the Great Fire of London and the plague. Yes, the plague. So basically, it's a very important historical document. So yeah, he gifted me a copy of it, which is very, very sweet. And I love that it's super old like this. It's gonna look very nice on my shelf. So if you see anybody comment on my videos that looks like they might be trolling me, called the Internet Quality Police. They're not because it is my partner's dad. Um, 
and he writes those words with love, so we're letting him off. So thank you. They are my memoir recommendations and all the ones on my TBR that I want to get to. If you have any recommendations, the cats are flying. If you have any memoir recommendations for me, please let me know in the comments below because I love to read them, especially like the lesser known ones that perhaps I wouldn't have heard of. That would be great and I hope you're all doing good and reading lots of great books and I'll be back soon. I'm off to Dublin next week so my next video might be my Dublin video. See you later!